Welcome everyone, this is Vlogs of an Idol, my name is Joen. So Huawei is still on a bad end with US having their latest phones get banned by Google to use their proprietary Android operating services. Now why in the hell did I buy a Huawei phone in 2020? Before we head to the review, go hit the subscribe button because 90% of you viewers are not yet subscribed to the channel. Also, the Halo GT1 XR giveaway is still ongoing. Head to my unboxing video to know the mechanics. Now back to the review. So yeah, I've always been a stock Android fan. Even now, I'm using the Novo Launcher on my Huawei Nova 5T, which is quite close to the stock Android experience. I really wanted to buy the Google Pixel 2 XL if it weren't for its battery getting refurbished. I mean, I can't live with 3-4 to four hours SOT and having it charge for 2 hours. That's like half of my usage getting drawn to charging. That's not a great user experience. Joe, if you're whining about battery, then why did you get a phone with 3750 mAh capacity? Why not get at least 4000 mAh like what the Mi 90 have. You know, that's what I was thinking as well. Plus, it has an AMOLED screen display, which is battery efficient. But, 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 I was really drawn to Huawei Nova 5T's ways to conserve its battery, having the option to reduce its screen resolution to 720p. I mean, what phone does that? It will not only reduce its battery consumption, but reduce lags as well. As if I will experience lag for it having a flagship chipset, Kirin 980 still edges out mid-range chipset released in that year 2020. Lalo na ngayon na presyo ng Nova 5T is almost at 13 to 14k, and comparing it to its competitor nung time na nirelease siya is uh, Xiaomi Mi 90 with the 6 and 128 variant is still at almost 16k pa rin yung price niya. So talagang pipiliin kong bilhin ay yung mas makakamura ko. Even though the Nova 5T resides on an IPS LCD display, it's still comparable to any Samsung phone with Super AMOLED. I mean, just look at how it competes with the Samsung C9 Pro that my brother have. I could hardly tell the difference between the sharpness and color correction. Viewing angles are not bad. I mean, it's not AMOLED level, but it's still pretty decent. The only bad side that I noticed is out of the box, meron na siyang onting screen retention sa top side at left side niya. It's normal to LCD panels, kesa naman sa mga AMOLEDs na inevitable magkaroon ng screen burn kapag... Uh, magal na yung usage mo sa kanila. Not only is the screen great, but also its back. It has a glass back with a design that reflects light that looks like it's coming out from its cameras, though it does not support wireless charging. Those are just some drawbacks para madala nila itong super beastly of a phone sa kanyang price point. Iisa lang ang variant ng Nova 5T, having 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. It's also not expandable through micro SD. Pero I mean, it's already on 128 gigs of storage. Sobra na yun sa isang casual user. Eh. Not unless photo hug ka, hindi mo naman siya mapupuno. And you could always save your photos and files through the cloud Man. Performance wise, never experienced any lag or stutters of some sort. To be honest, di ako sanay sa ganito kabilis na phone kasi lahat ng phone na nagkaroon ako are all entry level. From the Asus Zenfone Max to the Redmi Note 7, all of them didn't even reach the mid-range section. <laughs> so super new sa akin ng ganitong klase ng performance. Nakakatawa lang din na sobrang bilis na experience mo sa phone para sa presyo niyang sobrang mura na. Gaming is a breeze. Mapa super high or max settings pa ang gaming. Walang wala ka may experience na lag. And I'm not even turning on its performance mode. Kahit ano laro pa yung ipatong mo sa Niya, kaya ang kaya niya laruin. Mapa Call of Duty, Asphalt 9, Marvel Super War, kaya ang kaya niya i-run smoothly. Kaya huwag niyo nang tanongin dyan sa comment section kung Joen, malag ba siya sa Mobile Legends? Kaya niya ba laruin yung PUBG? Ah, 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 baka naman malag siya sa po... <laughs> Mga ganun tanong. Alam mo, yung Mobile Legends, hindi naman yan graphics intensive game. Kahit anong mga phones, kahit nga phones from 2016, kaya niya i-run smoothly yung Mobile Legends na yan. Huwag niyo isipin na sobrang special ng game na yan kasi napakapangit ah, naman ng graphics niya. Gusto mo sabay-sabay mo pala laruin yung mga games just a Huawei Nova 5T. Kayang kaya niya i-run simultaneously dahil sa kanyang 8 gigs of RAM. RAM management is really top notch. It's so top notch that even though kahit clear out mo na sila dun sa recently used apps, pag pininit mo yung app na yun, babalik pa rin siya dun sa recent activity na ginawa mo dun sa app. Sobrang lupit nun. <laughs> also, it has this neat window mode feature wherein you can choose an app to be on a window and you can multitask from different apps. Para mas upgraded version lang na split screen, kakatawa nga, I could chat on Discord while watching a YouTube vid. Although the downside is hindi mo pwedeng i-adjust yung size ng window. Speaking of apps, this phone is one of the last Huawei phones that supports Google services. So if you're into the Google ecosystem, this one is still a viable choice in 2020. Malaking droba kasi sa mga users ngayon ang kawalan ng Google services. I mean, doon na sila nasanay eh. Yun yung pinaka kinasanayan nilang gamitin sa mga Android phones nila. At saka alam naman natin na basta pag Android, Google-centered talaga yan. Luckily talaga na meron pa rin Google services tong Huawei Nova 5T kasi kapag wala, sobrang laki ng pangihinayang mo sa phone na to. At lalong hindi ko siya magiging choice na bilin <laughs> ngayon. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, side-mounted fingerprint scanner. One of the best things that ever happened to a smartphone. Well, next to USB Type-C. 
Super responsive, super sleek, a slight touch to the scanner will quickly unlock your phone. I even disabled the Face ID feature because I won't be needing that sa sobrang bilis ng fingerprint scanner niya. Besides, who even uses Face ID? Ah, yes, iPhone users. <laughs> I do have one complaint though. So the only way to click the power button is through the fingerprint scanner. So when I press it using my thumb, it automatically unlocks the phone. But what if I just want to check the time or just look at my lock screen? Though there is a raise to wake feature but it's not that battery efficient. Di ko talaga trip yung raise to wake feature na yan. Ang trip ko is yung double tap to unlock. Pero sadly, they removed it on the latest EMUI. So if ever ibalik ng Huawei yun sa kanilang next update, my experience with this phone would be much more of a breeze. Speakers are neat and loud. May slight boost rin ng bass. Clear and di rin sabog. Even on max volumes, hindi siya to the extent na mananakit yung tenga mo sa so sobrang lakas niya. And also malaki ang difference ng volume niya from 100 to 80. Parang dun lang yung may significant jump ng volume. Oh! No headphone jacks as well. Yun pala. Isa pa pala ng drawbacks. I mean, 2020, nauso na rin naman talaga sa mga flagships ang kawalan ng headphone jack. Nakakatawa nga na naging feature na siya sa mga phones. <laughs> Kahit dati is parang necessity na rin sa isang phone na magkaroon ng audio jack. Pero ngayon, ayan, parang neat, cool, quirky feature na siya. <laughs> and to be honest, di ko talaga napansin na wala siyang audio jack kasi I'm not really into wired. I always use wireless earphones, wireless gadgets, hindi ko talaga trip yung mga wired. Pero bad news to para sa mga gusto mag-vlog using the Huawei Nova 5T. Kasi if ever you want to up your audio game, you have to use an external mic, di ba? So you have to use a dongle pa para ma-insert yung mic dito sa Huawei Nova 5T. Speaking of vlogging, let's jump straight to its cameras. The cameras are near flagship level. It has a quad camera setup at the back, 2 megapixel depth assist camera, 48 megapixel main camera, 16 megapixel wide angle and another 2 megapixel macro camera and at the front is a 32 megapixel selfie cam so many pixels and so many pixels <laughs> pictures taken are quite sharp and decent realistic colors and not too saturated as well though some photos get washed up kapag pangit yung lighting i mean halos lahat naman ng phones ganun though it has a night mode which does a pretty decent job but it takes you six seconds to capture a photo so para sa mga pasmado dyan tibayan nyo ang sarili nyo dahil wala siyang built-in stabilization even though wala siyang built-in stabilization sobrang stabilized pa rin ng mga videos na makukuha mo sa kanya. Here are some sample shots I took para you'll be the judge for yourself. And here's my video test shooting at 1080p though it is capable for shooting 4K. Only! Only! Ano, anong trip mo, ha? Huh? Ooh, switch up to wide lens. That's nice. 10.1. Then wide. 1.1, 1.2. Bruh. I don't know how to work this thing out. I didn't shoot through 4K kasi hindi kaya ng laptop ko mag-edit ng 4K video. So, I'm really not picky pertaining to the camera department. Wala talaga akong pake kung ilang pang cameras ang meron siya. As long as the photos look good to post on social media, then it's good for me. Now it's time for the battery. Bro, I don't know why people say that the battery life on the Huawei Nova 5T sucks. I saw some YouTube reviews na ang SOT niyo daw is only 4 to 5 hours. I mean, di pa daw siya naglalaro nun ha. Sobrang bias lang talaga. Though in my experience, ang average SOT ko is 6 to 8 hours. Straight use on Wi-Fi plus gaming on max settings pa yun ha. Kaya nakakapagtaka talaga yung mga nagsasabi na sobrang pangit daw ng battery life ng Nova 5T. Hindi ko rin alam kung paanong usage ba ginagawa ng iba. Siguro dahil sobrang nasanay lang ako sa efficiency kaya tumatagal ng ganun yung akin. Pero I saw some users naman na ganun rin yung experience nila. Plus, ito ang pinakamaganda talaga. I only have to charge it for 1 hour and 20 minutes. Isipin mo ha, 8 hours SOT, then you're charging it for 1 hour and 20 minutes. Wala kang masasayang na oras dun. Thanks to its supercharged charger out of the box, I mean, who would complain about that? And for the price of only 14,500, you'll get to experience flagship level performance, flagship level cameras, efficient battery and supercharging, 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage, near AMOLED display. I mean, yan lang naman rin halos hanap ng mga casual users sa pagbibili nila ng phone ngayon, di ba? And majority talaga ngayon is yung magagamit nila yung phone for online classes, which kayang kayang tugunan ng Huawei Nova 5T. For its price point, andun talaga siya sa tip top 
ng list na phones na marerecommend ko to buy this year 2020. And for me, di talaga ako nagsisi na binili ko siya kahit na ba lumabas yung Poco X3. <laughs> Now that's my review of the Huawei Nova 5T. Ever man na may nakaligtaan akong sa no Huawei Nova 5T, ilagay nyo lang sila doon sa comment section at sasagutin ko sila mabuti as much as possible. If you do like the content, be sure to subscribe and hit the notifications bell for you get updated on every uploads that I make. I do it weekly. Yun lang! Stay safe everyone! At ayun, mukhang naliwanagan na ako sa Huawei. <laughs> Anyways guys, see you sa next video. Bye-bye!